Aces. We have a massive show today. Only sport with the meatball. Dion Prestia in their house. A few highlights coming your way. I'll tell you what, did you know that Dion Prestia was going to be in the fruit and wholesale industry working at Footscray Markets if he wasn't going to get a kick? That's right. We also go into the unforgettable flop. Our pilot segment, you won't see that one coming. And we relive the Carmichael Hunt goal after the siren. Oh, this show is a crack at Righto. I'll leave it there. Let's dive straight into the podcast. We all love an impressive performance on the field. And now, thanks to our latest sponsor, Pilot, you can have an impressive performance in the bedroom too. Pilot provides Aussie men with the clinical tools to treat bedroom issues like erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation. Not a fan of the doctor's office? Pilot is all online, so you can sort it out right now over the phone, and with free delivery Australia-wide, you can be back on your game in no time. Head to pilot.com.au today and get started. Play hard until the final whistle with Pilot. Aces, I know I always talk about the Rixies, but I've got to offer you the discount again. In case you've forgotten or in case you're sleeping under a rock, we have a special discount code for everyone that listens to this podcast or watch the podcast. It's Aces. Head online to rickseyewear.com.au and use the discount code Aces and you'll get 20% off. That's right, 20% off, one-fifth at checkout. And free express shipping. So head online, rickseyewear.com.au and check it out. All right, do we have a big show for you today? Let's get stuck into it. The meatball's in the house. Here he is. <laughs> Welcome back to uh, the studio. Actually, this is your first time yeah. in the studio, isn't it? Yeah, first time here. It looks looks good, Tommy. Our NFL season together hasn't gone the way we would have liked. Yeah, so We'll touch yep. on NFL before we talk about sport in general. Would you say that's my fault? Um, yeah, completely your fault, <laughs> I think. Well, I was actually I was actually on um I was in Rome when we had the draft. So I was trying to log on on, on the internet, had no reception. And um yeah, I kind of just left it up to you and had a look at the team when I got back to the uh hotel room and I was like, oh no, we've drafted Cole Pitts. <laughs> Todd and we've got two two or three Bengals players. <laughs> Oh, it was a bad year for the yeah. Bengals at the start. Yeah. They're better off playing our Bengals players at the end of the season with a backup quarterback. But uh, yeah, we relied heavily on the Bengals, and it's been um, a disappointing season yeah. year. Um, but look, energy was good. Thought we were a bit stiff, but anyway, got um, some new boys in the comp. That was good. Yeah, it's been they're a good well. NFL comp. Yeah. Um, anyway, only sport. We're here to talk about all sports, not just NFL. <laughs> Obviously, we love it. Let's talk about you growing up. What drew you to sport? Like wh- when you, how old were you? What were the sports that you were playing? And you know, what was, who drew you to the sports? Um, yeah, I only played a couple of sports as a kid. Um, I wasn't allowed to play cricket because mum and dad wanted to go away um, on the weekend. So I just played basketball and, and obviously AFL. Um, so I think, I think we just kind of got into basketball just through school programs and, a um, couple of different competitions we did at primary school. And then AFL, my my dad was a massive Melbourne supporter and all my family as well. Um, so I used to love just being outside, kicking the footy um, in my front yard at home in Craigieburn. I have the post set up like on the fence <laughs> where they where they, um, where they meet. And then uh, in my back, in my front yard, it looks like a 50 meter arc. So I used to be out there playing footy um, all the time as a kid pretending to be Melbourne players and play games and stuff like that. Who would so, you pretend to be? Uh, I love Jeff Farmer growing yeah. up. Um, so small forward. The wizard. Yeah, the wizard. So, <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely loved him. So he was probably like my one, um, yeah, one favorite I used to try to be like. Did you used to commentate yourself in the backyard? <laughs> um, I think I did, yeah. That's yeah. great. I think mum and, mum and dad would come out and think I'm talking to someone, but it was just me <laughs> commentating in the backyard. But, um, yeah, that's, that's probably what drew me um, to footy, you know, being at the MCG watching games most weeks um, was was pretty cool. So. With basketball point guard, I'd imagine how how good were you at basketball? Um, I, I was pretty good. If I tried to play basketball now, I don't think I'd be much chopped. But I tried out for I think the highest I got to was trying out for like the Vic team under 15s or something like that. Um, and I got to like the last 40 and then didn't make it. And then um, I think that's where I kind of had that bit of a um, crossroad between playing basketball or footy. And, um, yeah, I think I probably enjoyed playing footy, footy a lot more than I did basketball. And then, yeah, it was, it was a bit of an obvious choice because of my height, but, um, 
yeah, it was, I still, still love it and still love watching like the NBL, not too much into the NBA, but yeah, I think it's a, they put on a pretty cool show. Who do yeah. you go for on the NBL? Oh, I just, I like United, um, just cause it's, cause it's Melbourne, but, um, yeah, I, I just like how much it's built over the last few years. Um, you know, they're, they're really getting bigger and bigger and getting overseas and, and things like that. And yeah, getting to a game at, um, I think John Kane where they play, it's just, yeah, it's a big entertainment show for two hours. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is good. It's it's it, the league's getting bigger and bigger, which is which is the grass. Let's talk about sport, right? If uh, like it's all worked out for you, like you know you've you've been a superstar at football since you're probably you know four years old. <laughs> but let's say if sport didn't work out for you. What would what would Dion Presti be doing right now? You reckon? Oh. I definitely wouldn't be playing another sport. Um, I guess I get called a one sport wonder at the club along with a few <laughs> others. Who are the um, other who are the others? Tommy Lynch is a uh, horrific at everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because his fingers are just formed. Um, <laughs> not really sure. There's a few good golfers, but um, I don't know, for them to play pro there, I don't think they're gonna be making it. But um, yeah, I'd be I'd be working in the fruit and wholesale <laughs> fruit and wholesale game if I um if I didn't play footy and I learned that lesson pretty early on. Um, pre, pre getting drafted, um, working with my old man for a couple of days. It's a, it's a pretty, um, tough industry, early hours and, um, lots of chaos down the Footscray markets where they used to be. So, um, yeah, I probably would have, would have gone into that, that industry up hundred percent. I would have, um, yeah, been in the, uh, fruits wholesale market. What's it like? So your old man gave you a little bit of work experience. Like give us a little rundown of the day. Cause it's pretty interesting. It's like, I don't think a lot of yeah. people are in the fruit and wholesale industry. <laughs> Um, yeah, so when, when we had the company, the Presti Wholesales, um, <clears throat> I remember dad getting up at 11 o'clock in, in the, at night. Um, so he'd be up, go into the market, meet the, the trucks coming in. Um, so he pretty much got it from the farmers and then they would distribute like to Coles or, um, other like little grocers, I guess. And, um, and then, yeah, he'd, he'd probably much, pretty much work on the floor, like they would put a display out, like you see in like the fruit shops down, um, down at your lo local shops and stuff, and then get as many sales as possible. Then they'll be back up at the office, um, probably from like 10 o'clock and then 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And then, yeah. So he's dad, done, already done 11 hours. 11 hours. And then dad would get home, um, normally around midday lunchtime and then just sleep, um, until dinner time or if, um, Myself or my two sisters had sport. He would take us there and then, um, yeah, have dinner, go back to bed and do the same routine. Oh, right. um, That's crazy, yeah, man. Five, five or six times a, a week. And, um, yeah, so so when I, before I got drafted, um, there was about a week or two between exams and um, get actually the draft. And he was like, if you, if you don't want to work hard playing footy, you can do this. So I went, I only went in for probably two days and I was absolutely spent after that. I'm like, right, oh, that's a, that's a good little lesson to learn. Um, yeah, pre, pre draft to, to know probably what the real world is like. And, um, yeah, I was still, yeah, thinking about that those days and yeah, it's pretty, pretty tough. They are tough. So yeah, the old man, has he ever like, does Oz ever like open up about how hard it is? Because six days a week, you know, just yeah. e every week for how many years? Like, does he ever open up and just say, "Mate, this is tough. This is, oh, just, just, just gets it done." Blue collar. Um, no, nah, he's a bit of, a, he's a bit of a just get the job done um, type of type of bloke. Um, he he knows a lot of people. Like, there's so many people um, who work there or um, used to work there and stuff. So he's got lots of mates in there. A lot of his time now is there at the cafe drinking coffee. He's not <laughs> he's not working too much, but um, yeah, he kind of he's just done it for so long that it's 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 probably pretty normal for him. Like, it's yeah. Um, it's probably just as normal f for myself going into training after doing it for so long now. So, um, but yeah, you, you definitely know it's tough. Like he would have sacrificed a lot of oh. sleep and, um, yeah, you know, hours of just being around the kids during school holidays and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, no, he's, uh, did he ever give you some feedback after your two days? Like said, mate, uh, you know, you, you're, you're fucking hopeless. <laughs> you better go right. No, a lot of, a lot of my stuff was like, um, if they got a big roll of stickers and he'd be like that box over there, you got to stick it here every, on every single one. And I would have like 15 pallets to do. So I would like put the stickers on or have the stamp for the date. Um, a couple of times he let me do some orders, but, um, I don't think he trusted me 
too much with um, getting get the <laughs> yeah. right things with the with the um, other sales. So um, yeah, it was a lot of a lot of that. But um, yeah, I just remember like trying to get a little kip on on a forklift or something like that. And yeah, he's um, he's got two brothers as well who worked in there when I was there. So. They'll also give me a bit of bit of grief when I was when I was working in there. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, I've never asked you that. Oh, that's that's great. Mm. It's always good to get perspective and uh, yeah, to hear the family stories as well to see what the old boy. I mean, I knew he was in that industry, but I didn't know that. I didn't know the hours of that. That's re- that's upside down. It's like yeah. nocturnal. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's yeah. You got to eleven p.m. Yeah, you got to get up and start your day before everyone else starts their day and have it ready yeah. ready to go. I guess it's like a. A baker or something like, you know, yep. they're up early. They're up early. I, I don't early. think they're up that early though. Yeah. That's not even early. It's like late early. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, yeah. I know, it's so. like everyone's just going to bed and you're up. Yeah. I, wonder, um, I don't know if he did any or not. Was maybe when he was younger, he might have went straight through from the nightclubs oh, in Faulkner or the Social Club or something like that. He probably did. There you go. Talk <laughs> about sacrifice. I was going to ask you, that's your, there's sacrifices that your old man did for your family. What were some sacrifices you reckon you made when you were a youngster? Um, going through the ranks that yeah. people wouldn't understand. Um, I guess there's probably like different types of sacrifices. I know. I remember getting drafted going into, um, I guess that that final year. There was a lot of 18th happening, um, which I just didn't go to because we had a, a game on like a a weekday or um, you know playing for school and playing for Calder and playing Big Metro. There was a lot of games Sundays or Saturdays and um, miss, I guess a lot of, a lot of parties that you kind of like sacrifice not going to, but, um, yeah, it was always probably that kind of things. And then well, on the Gold Coast, um, was probably where I missed a lot of like time with my schoolmates and time with my family. Um, I guess is probably the biggest sacrifices I guess I've, I've had to make, um, as an AFL player, you know, um, my, my family were coming up and that was pretty lucky, lucky for me, but, um, yeah, I know there was a lot of. Families that weren't getting up there too much and we kind of end up looking after ourselves in the end up on the coast. But um, yeah, it was probably just those, I guess those like incidental catch-ups with the schoolmates or um, being able just to drive home and see your family and stuff like that was was probably the biggest um, sacrifices I guess I made. Mm. Yeah, um, well said. We made, it made me made it a, lot, a lot easier coming back to, to Richmond. I guess you can kind of escape the, the footy world of it by just going to see your family or your friends that you have grown up with, um, and most of the time you don't talk about footy or they don't, or I don't want to talk about footy most of the time when I go back and see them. But, um, yeah, I think there's always yeah, a couple of was... stories around the table as well <laughs> with the local lads. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's awesome. What about some challenging moments? Like what, what, what's something that you still remember that was the most challenging you've, you've had, like the adversity you faced and, uh, and how did you overcome it? Yeah. Um, oh, I'm, haven't had too many significant injuries, touch wood. Um, but just when I hurt my knee, probably on the on the Gold Coast was was pretty challenging. End up um, hurting my lateral meniscus and then got infected during surgery. So um, yeah, it was something that I've never had to deal with. You know, going into a surgery and um, you know season was over. Um, I didn't walk or I had my knee in a you know, I had my knee in a brace for twelve weeks and my leg. Um, and my quad pretty much just like deteriorated to, to nothing. So, um, yeah, it was like a long, it was a long road back. So that happened in 2015. Um, I, I kind of hobbled my way through 2016 and thinking I was okay, but the little, little, um, just scar tissue and stuff that needed to fix it up. And then when I, when I got to Richmond, um, I remember the doctor saying to me like, mate, you are so far behind. In strength wise and, and, um, and I thought I was going, going pretty well. So, um, yeah, still, I still deal with it a fair bit today, just really? in terms of getting, um, getting it ready game day. Um, after a big session, it kind of just like, no, nah, I've had enough here and just kind of doesn't Is switch the on. Quad or the knee? Yeah. More the quad. Yeah. Um, so that happened, yeah. 2015 was that injury. So That's nearly, crazy, nearly eight years ago. So, um, yeah, it's kind of, I guess every footballer who plays, for more than more than even five or six years, has some sort of thing they have to deal with injury wise or body wise. So um, that was probably my biggest one, just because there was a lot of unknown about why, like why it was it was um, getting sore or um, yeah, just kind of go to run out there and be like, oh, that's not it's not switched <laughs> on today, and do a few I don't know quarter squats to get it going and stuff. But um, yeah, that's my that's my biggest challenge I've faced. 
and anything like in the moment that you remember where you're like, far out, like that you just, you know, did you speak to someone? Like what kind of, what got you through? Um, more, the reason I ask this question yeah. is more like there's a lot of people out there that suffer something, whether there's, you know, there's tragedy or whether it's an injury or whether they're struggling with their job or whatever. But like, was there something you could share that maybe you just thought that helped me? Yeah. Um, mom was probably asking questions, probably just being curious about, um, things that people have done. I was pretty lucky. I, I don't think I ran for about a month or two when I got to Richmond. So I was able just to smash strength, um, with our physio who, Anthony Shack, who's an absolute jet, who's been there for forever, I think. Um, so yeah, I was just kind of able to, um, ask him lots of questions and, um, just they've, they've had obviously previous experience from knee injuries and, and things like that. You know, he stories of players just sitting on like a leg extension machine. So I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll try that, see if that works. And like, yep, that worked, that didn't work. So kind of just, yeah, being curious, I feel like in all kind of things in life, like the more questions you ask, nothing's a stupid question, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I encourage young guys to ask questions about game plan or, or like how we – I guess started our career or what we what we found work and um I know you're happy you're happy to answer it. There's no as I said, there's no mm. no stupid question. I feel when you're trying to learn a, a new skill or you're trying to um improve yourself. I think that's a, yeah, what I found. Yeah, well said. Um no, nah, it's great advice. Be curious, look for solutions, um, and then just keep keep kind of fighting. Let's talk about pressure. There's a few more what about you playing sport before we get to our halftime segment and talk about sport in general. But high stakes, how do you handle the pressure? You know, like coming back from injury, being a, you know, being a premiership superstar you are and uh, having to rock up every week and deliver week in, week out, being a leader. How do you, you know, maybe Thursday night football, the season opener, you know, all eyes on you, the whole footy world's watching, yeah. you know, the first ball goes up and you're going to be there. Like, it makes me nervous. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to build it up. Yeah, you know I mean? like there you go. You're getting nervous. But like when you do get nervous, how do you handle the high stakes, you know, and yeah. what do you come back to? Yeah. Um, I know we've done a lot of work, Richmond, in that in that kind of the headspace, uh, mental side of, of 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 the game. Um, you know, we we nearly used to train that more than we used to train on field uh, a lot of the time because a lot of the game is is um is, is in your head. So um, every I feel like I get nervous before every game, and it's just if I'm not nervous, then I feel like it's like I don't care. Um, so I try to I try to like say to myself like, yeah, this is normal. Um, Having a lot of experience, you know, now that I've played over 200 games, I'm, I kind of can get the feeling of, yeah, I felt this before. This is normal. I know that I can perform. I've performed before. Having these feelings and, um, yeah, not everything's going to be perfect. I remember when I was younger, I tried to have the exact same routine for what I eat. This is when I want to wake up. This is when I want to eat brekkie on game day. And it was just it was just way too hard to, to maintain and then – if I wasn't able to do it, it would like put me in a hole going into the game. Um, so I, I become a bit more relaxed in in terms of my preparation for um, pre-game in terms of things that I can't control in a way. But now now my things is more like what I can control. So I like being all over the game plan. I kind of think if I know if I know everyone else's position and stuff like that, then I'm ahead of, ahead of everyone else. Um, Try to know our system and game plan um, to as high as my knowledge as I possibly can because I know it's, everyone's everyone's fit. We're, everyone in the AFL's fit and um, you know well skilled. We do it every single day, so it's like that. Probably knowledge of the game and knowledge of game plan and opposition is somewhere I feel like I can get an advantage. And um, like um, I wouldn't say I'm the quickest, but I'm not slow. I wouldn't say I'm the fittest, but I'm not unfit. Um, I'm pretty, pretty good in all those physical areas. So it's like, that's where I can, I feel like I can make myself not nervous knowing that I've done everything I can to get ready for, for this game. Um, so yeah, it's something that I've probably tried to do, especially over the last four or five years at, at Richmond, just trying to yeah be completely over the, over the top in my preparation for, for game day. And then when I run out there and there's 80,000 at the gym round one, I know that I know like where that player is going to be. I know where this player is going to be. I know how we want to want to play the game. And um, yeah. 
Yeah, pretty, it's good. Well said. Nice. I mean, Joe Watson said he's training as well, which is his preparation. You're the same. It's like, can't get any fitter, yeah. you know, know the game plan, work out what the plan is for the night and then embrace the nerves. Sounds like that's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Like, I know you get nervous about everything, I guess. Yeah. Like you always. It's the unknown. Yeah. Yeah. The unknown. Yeah. Like you're. What about this? What about that? But if yeah. you just bring yourself back to hang on, I can't control that. Like what can I control? Yeah, Cause there's games where I, I go into games where I think like, oh, like what if I don't get a touch today? And it's like, well, it's oh, never mate, happened. I used to go through me every week. <laughs> it's never happened in the game. Like. Oh, I've, I've, oh, I've, have I told you <laughs> at my last game, I didn't have a <laughs> no, touch at three quarter time. <laughs> man, I didn't have a touch. So. No, nah, I was that, playing a full game. I was the first game back after the horrific calf. Yeah. I'm playing that offside wing. Yeah. Who are you playing against? We played Hawthorne. We're up yeah. by 50. I could not, I couldn't get into the ball. <laughs> and I started thinking, I mean, I'm embarrassing my family. Yeah, I knew. Yeah. But I was, yeah. ra- I was like, oh, cause everyone, you know, when you're like, come back, it's like probably your round one game. Well, this is like for everyone that knew me was like, he's yeah. back. Like he's been out for a whole year. Mm. Hadn't you just t- want to get your hands on the Bro, ball. Bro, I hadn't really. touched it, right? <laughs> Talk about thinking about the un- – I'm going, fuck. What? I reckon the coaches were talking to me and I wasn't even like – I couldn't even hear because I was just thinking about – I've embarrassed my whole family here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get one? I got like Did four in the last quarter, like yeah. just four or five. But I remember walking off the field going, wow, like I, I kind of played my role, but – Mm. There's no way knowing I'm, I'm, I can look the coach in the eye yeah. and say I've done a good job. Like, yeah. You know what? Actually, you know when they go, did you play your role? Fucking oath I did. Yeah. Did you yeah. get a kick? Didn't get a, didn't get near it. And it was like, mate, it was the loneliest place. And I just, it's just funny that you say, like, never yeah. had a touch. Oh, mate, I thought that was the day I wasn't going to touch <laughs> yeah. it. But it's funny you say that because as a player, you, ha- you have no idea who's had a touch or anything. So the coaches might would know because they have the stat sheet and stuff. But yeah. as a player – on the field, you wouldn't even know. Like Mate. sometimes I look at the scoreboard and it's like, gee, that got like 30. I reckon I you know your players it. when yeah. um, you walk in and you've had a good win and there's a couple yeah. of blokes where they look a bit flat yeah. and you're like, fuck, well, he looks a bit flat. And then, you, like, you know, when you get on your phone, you might have, you just first thing is, you know, you've done your recovery, you get your phone out and you t- all your text messages or sometimes yeah. you don't get any. If you don't, yeah. if you don't get near awesome. it, there's no <laughs> messages, right? And then um, you get in the car later on and you'll just check the stats and you'll be like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Old mate's had a stinker. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he's a bit flat, yeah, you know. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. But mate, I, I actually look at the stats sometimes and think, I think I finished with four or five, and I think about blokes to have one or two for the full game. And I, yeah. I remember how rattled I was in this game uh, at the end, and I'm thinking, oh, that poor bloke yeah. must be driving home from the, from yeah. the G or wherever it is, just thinking, oh, oh no. what about me? Yeah. <laughs> but you think you, you'd probably go home and think that everyone's thinking about it too, but. You kind of see nah. it and be like, oh, yep. Nah, like, blokes just go straight to the top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, uh, it's yeah, crazy. We're pretty lucky as midfielders. We get to be around the ball a fair bit more oh, than mate, we have it. You dish it to the wingman. <laughs> 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 the winger on the on – the, yeah, the guy that's painting that fence. <laughs> uh, very good. What about um, – two more here before we get to the halftime segment. What's the most memorable moment you've had in your career? Like, you know, if I'm talking from juniors all the way through. There's obviously thousands, but just a mem- memorable moment that stands out and why? Uh – so one one of the memories is probably um, Carmichael's goal after the siren. Um, so I think that might have been my first win for the for that year. And it was about round fifteen or sixteen. But um, yeah, we I was at the Gold Coast versus Richmond. Um, funny enough, and then I think we were down by fourteen points or something like that with about a minute to go. And I remember Josh Cater kicked the goal from about sixty, and then Harbour kicked the goal with about twenty seconds to go, and we. Carmichael took that mark. And I remember being right next to Carmichael as he marked the ball, just thinking like, this is an unbelievable like story. You know, yeah. Everyone everyone in Queensland absolutely loves Carmichael with all the stuff he did in rugby league and um, came over and grew the game um, so well up there. And then, yeah, here's his chance to kick a goal after the siren, which every kid dreams about doing. Um, so, yeah, that would that would probably be one of my like non-finals or, or um, I guess, success a uh, moment that really, like, I'll, I'll kind of remember forever and I was right right there in front of him, so. Let's keep talking about it. So he marks the ball. What, like, what did you say to him? Let's start. Well, Obviously, I'm, your memorable moments are your premierships and all that. I'm glad you brought up another one. Let's go. Carmichael's got it. You're next yeah. to him. Yeah. Did I you was, say anything? Like, I was literally, as he took the mark, I was I was the first one at him. So and I, I think I'd, I don't even know what I said. I'd, I probably just said, like, yeah, take your time. Take, take your time, time <laughs> or something because we were yeah. down by two points or whatever it was. And then I think I was just. I reckon I thought he'll kick this. Like this is just meant to happen. Like he's the siren's gone. 
like he's got the ball, like he'll hundred percent kick it. Then it was um, just pretty much like stacks on for him <laughs> for him that night. But yeah, it was um, yeah, it was it was a pretty pretty cool situation. At so Tony good, Cardiff. man. I remember watching it like as just a like you just hate seeing blokes lose. Like if you you know as we record this podcast, I think the in the NBA, the Pistons have lost like twenty four in a row, and you're just like, oh, I yeah. just want them to get a win because it's just depressing when you keep losing. But any league where you lose and lose and lose, like you just need a little yeah. fix. When when he kicked that goal, I want to know the celebrations because it would have been – like you've won, what, three flags? Like was it yeah. equivalent to winning the flag? Like how hard did you just go that night? Or you're all still um, under you – know, you're all yeah, 18. We played in Cairns. So we played in Cairns. Oh, it's in Cairns. Um, so we – I think we flew home the next day from from memory because it, it was a night game up there. So – I'm pretty sure we flew home the next day and the club let us like go out. I think we went to the Pav or something, <laughs> probably like everyone does on the Gold Coast. And um, yeah, just kind of like celebrated the win. It was just like such a such a weird thing to happen. And I don't know, if someone said that someone's going to kick goal after the siren, it'll, I'm like, oh, it'll probably be Carmichael. He'll probably do something <laughs> pretty pretty cool. You know, everyone spoke about him for so long when we were up there. But um, yeah, I guess it was different to the premiership one because we, everyone just like attacked one player where the premiership you see like, spread out all over the field yeah. and, and everything like that. But um yeah, it was um yeah, it was a it was a very cool moment, especially being so young. Um and I think we only won one or two games, I think, leading into that. So we're all pretty desperate for a yeah for a win. You know, we probably had our footy trip booked already. So I can't wait was- for the <laughs> clip right over the weapon over there. We'll get the best social clip of this. I, <laughs> I I haven't heard about his name or spoken about him before. Can you just, I'm really interested on Carmichael, mm. your relationship with him. What's he doing now? Do you, does he still pop into the club? Like was yeah. obviously it was a great, um, um, you know, opportunity for him to get in and kind of get out. But like, yeah, yeah. it was, it was a pretty odd situation. Cause he, um, he obviously played rugby league and did pretty much everything he could in, um, in league. And then just before the Suns preseason, he was in France playing rugby union. So it was just like such a weird thing that he was like playing over there and then he was coming into preseason and I just remember him being like massive, like his <laughs> legs were huge and, um, Str- did he struggle yeah. big time with yeah, the preseason? The running, like it, was all, it was just like the long runs, like the long runs. But then I also remember in the handball games, you just always try to keep an eye out for him to see where he rolls. Obviously his background was tackling and hit him pretty hard and he had a few big hits like during the game that were fair as well. Um, but yeah, he was, he would have been pretty young. I still feel like he was in his mid twenties when he, when he was at the Gold Coast and I always thought him as being like a real, like much older than, uh, most of us 18 or 19 year olds who were there. But, um, yeah, he was such a, such a good, good, genuine guy. Like he was just like anyone else, um, that you'd meet on the street. Like he always had time for everyone and had a lot of attention on him up and up in Queensland because he was such a big Broncos like legend really. Um, and then I'm thinking, I think he might've like played four or five years. So he left and then went back to rugby union when I was still up on the Gold Coast. But, um, yeah, he was, um, yeah, he was a, he was a really good, really good guy. You know, like he took a lot of young boys into his house, um, and stuff like that. And yeah, he was, um, yeah, he was, it was pretty cool to be able to say yeah. that you played with him when you were an 18 and 19 year old. Did he ever cop it from? Because obviously they're mad NRL up there. Like, did he ever cop it when he was out? Like, people were like, oh, you shouldn't be playing oh. that game. Yeah, I know that. Because yeah. I know, like, oh, you just go to the pub sometimes and they just <laughs> they just spray AFL. Some of them it's like, come on, boys. Like, yeah. they um, can get around both sports, but they do. They're diehard. Yeah, they're diehard. Yeah, rugby fans up there. Yeah. A lot of the time, well, we we probably didn't notice it as much, but a lot of the time we'd go to school clinics and they would just be, where's Carmichael? Where's Carmichael? That's all they wanted to know. And we'd be doing a clinic, AFL clinic, and then the questions would be like, who scored the most tries this year for you? Isn't it uh, like yeah, they're just, the wrong sport? Like, yeah, it's just it so just raw out there. Yeah, especially in – well, I got there in 2010, and it was – like really, it was the Brisbane Brisbane Lions, and that was really it for, for AFL. So, yeah, the, the game's grown like – Massive, cra- yeah. yeah. It's crazy up there. I think they got most junior numbers and, and increase in Auskick um, numbers and stuff. So, um, yeah, why not? I guess that's why they got the – Opening around there as well, you know, trying to trying to take over that market in Sydney, Sydney and Queensland. So. Yeah, it's good. There you go, Carmichael Hunt, a blast from the past. Yeah. I haven't heard his name. I remember the goal. I remember the moment. I could kind of remember the Brandon Materia, our good mate, around yeah, there remember, somewhere remember, as well. Yeah, he kicked it to him. Yeah, yeah. I remember Murder yeah. was in the play. I just remember that it was just a special moment for anyone that loves sport yeah. and just like – 
<laughs> I guess the underdogs. Yeah. Um, Everyone, if you don't go for Richmond. Yeah, there you go. Because Richmond made about <laughs> yeah. 400 mistakes in the last two minutes of that game. So. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, there you go. You all turned it around from there. <laughs> Who would have thought, right? You got Carmichael Hunt, kicks the goal. You're celebrating with him. Then you go to Richmond and win three flags. And now Dimmer, who is your head coach, <laughs> is now the head coach of the Suns. Yep. Yeah, Who's writing that story? Yeah, there'll be a little script like the NFL, <laughs> the NFL script. script. It might be yeah. happening in the AFL. <laughs> it's a cracker one. Oh, <laughs> my God. There you go. One more. We had a great question um, from the Aces. I'll read out um, the the great man's name. We, we really appreciate everyone that writes in. I asked for some feedback. This is the most common question. So from T Brooks underscore five, thank you for your question. Um, loving the show. And you said you wanted me to touch on a little bit more about what motivates our guest. So what, Dion, what motivates you? You know, you've, you're into your, how many pre-seasons is this? 12, 13? This is 14. 14. Yeah. 14. How dare I? So 14th <laughs> pre-season, what motivates you to get out of bed, get up that early, ruin your body on the track, and then, you know, learn more, get around the new crop that comes through week in, week out, year on year, you know, what motivates you to do that? Where does it all come yeah. from? Uh, well, I guess it's a bit of a, bit of a, just a why, like why you you play um, something that I've tried to bring in a lot of um, into my game and into kind of my, my life. Like, why am I doing this? Am I getting better today and things like that? So, um, mine's mine's my family. Really, you know, um, there's not many prestiers, and I don't know if there's many prestiers rolling around the AFL. So it's just kind of making, um, I guess, them proud. And um, if people come up to them on the street, it's like, oh, we love you we love your brother or we love your son, you know, he's um, a great player and a, and a great person. So it's, it's probably like more my, my why I do things. Um, you know, like we have a fair bit of attention on us and it's always just, you never know who you're going to, you're going to meet in the street and things like that and to make your family proud. Um, I guess, as you said before, with getting the two or three touches, it's just, yeah, finding, finding your why, you know, um, I know like there's a lot of guys in, the NFL who play, you know, they've come from a um, like a poorer background and they want to like support their family and things like that. So, um, yeah, I just want to kind of make my family proud and also also a bit on, on just like myself, like selfishly, you just want to get better. You know, you want to see how far you can you can really push yourself. Um, like I know in the AFL world, you hit thirty and it's kind of a bit like oh, you know, you're at the end of your career. But I'm trying to my, my mindset is that like. Why can't I improve and get better? Um, so a lot of my things this preseason has been like trying to hit PBs in the gym, you know, like instead of going less weights, like let's see if we can hit some PBs in, in the gym, um, kind of like back up every session, like instead of being like, oh, no, you're 30 now, um, like let's let's rest you here. But it's like, no, nah, let's just, let's back up these sessions and see how, see how far I can actually, actually push it and, um, some things that have motivated me is seeing like the ages of NFL players and um, the ages of NBA players. You know, there's so many, um, you know, like guys in their late 30s who are still, you know, dominating the NBA as well. So I kind of look at it and, um, yeah, have this conversation with a few of the older guys as well and just think like, why not? Like, why can't we um, keep keep playing at a high level for, for a long time? So. Um, it's all, it's also a pretty amazing job. You know, we're, we're so lucky to go into the club and, and train for, for a living. And, um, you know, like our, our really hard sessions are, are still pretty, pretty cool when you think about it. Like when you sit back and, and look and, um, I know every retirement speech that I hear, it's always like, you miss the, the general chats and just going out and training hard. Um, you, you kind of crave that, um, competition when you, when you finish footy. So yeah, that's that's definitely what motivates me. No, nah, well said, mate. I really appreciate you sharing that. It's uh, it's good. I've got, I've, you know, it's a new question for all our guests moving forward, and uh, we thank you know people that get around all the polls and all the questions we ask you on Insta, so we can improve the show and you know get more out of the guests that come on. And uh, yeah, no, nah, that's great, mate. Great answer as well. Loved it. Um, well, that takes us to half time. Brado, ring the bells, ring the siren. It's half time. And uh, like like you all know at Only Sport, this is our friends right here at Pilot. Um, you know, Dion, I don't know if you know much about Pilot, but when you're sick, I think you were sick the other week, there's nothing worse than having to go into the doctor's office and ask him what's wrong with me. The best thing about Pilot, do you know what the best thing about Pilot is? Online. Call him online. 
get the doctor's approval on what it is, as I said, and you can get it done literally in bed when you're sick. So shout out to Pilot. This is our pilot segment, our halftime unforgettable flops brought to you by pilot.com.au. We've had some great flops so far. Crossy actually had one uh, recently with your teammate, Grimesy, who uh, gave him one and he flopped on the field. Literally flopped. Literally yeah. flopped. Yeah. He actually changed the uh, the brief of the question. The, uh, Job mixed it up a little bit. Job had the flop where he, uh, you know, he had the seven minute head start and got beat around the Marby by uh, property steward in Swags. <laughs> that's uh, that's a fair flop. If you can recount an embarrassing moment on the field, what would your uh, what would your unforgettable flop be? Yeah, um, I try not to embarrass myself too much, um, but when I was early days. Um, in my AFL career on the Gold Coast, I was still trying to work out what was right diet wise, fitness wise, things like that. Nervous as well. Right. Used to get really nervous. And, um, a lot of people kind of show nerves different ways, like sweat, some might vomit pregame. So mine was not pregame during the game, get the, get the runs. I used to get the <laughs> runs. So in our, in, and in 2011, 12, 13, I don't think there was an interchange cap. So you can rotate as many times as you want. So so now if I go off and I got, you know, need to go to the toilet, I, like I got five or, five or six minutes on the bench. This was like about 30 seconds. So there was a lot of the times I would start the start the game, only last a minute maybe, get off, run straight downstairs, be in the, be in the um, toilets, and then the next one coming off the next midfield will be like, where's my rotation? Where's my rotation? And I'm just <laughs> – I'm back in the in the change room still in number two. So, um, yeah, I would. Oh, I might have been a bit of a flop for our um, for our game for our system, but yeah, I guess it was just when you got to go, you got to go, and that was how I showed showed my nerves in my in my early days in my career. So there you go, the pilot <laughs> <laughs> embarrassing moment, the flop, big meatballs out the back in the cubicles while Gaza Ablett's looking for his rotation. <laughs> Too much pasta for breakfast, maybe. <laughs> Learn to change that. <laughs> Got to lay off the meatballs the night before, <laughs> mate. That's unbelievable. It does make sense, though. People don't realise that I, I used to get the worst stomach cramps after a game because yeah. of all yeah. the shit that you have, you know, your gels, all the prep, like the hydrolyte. I don't know what it is. You're yeah, drinking everything. so many fluids. You're running. You, you literally – they call it gut running for a reason, I yeah. reckon. You're running yeah. your guts into – just a new, just a new system, but um, that's funny. And I do know the Gold Coast change rooms; they're right near the bench there, so yeah. you can literally just run straight <laughs> underneath. <laughs> Maybe like in that moment, I want to touch on this. This is great. So when you're in the dunny, you're probably thinking, "I can hurry up." I'm like, playing, yeah, yeah. I, remember, I reckon I was thinking, "I'm an AFL player. You play an AFL like your lifelong dream, and you're sitting in the bathroom like." <laughs> <laughs> With the runs, but uh, oh, that yeah. is so good, man. That is so good. Uh, I think a lot of people can relate to that. Anyone that's run their guts off uh, or gets super nervous, we all handle it different ways. I know a lot of people vomit, but um, yeah, there you go. Well, a big shout out to our friends at Pilot. Like we say, free shipping, auto refills, and free follow ups over text with practitioners. You just got to get started at pilot.com.au. Um, and remember, boys. Play hard until the final whistle with Pilot and use our special discount code ACES, ACES20 at checkout, a one-time use uh, for all you ACES listeners and viewers. All right. Well, that's half time. Done and dusted. Now time to get off the field with only sport. This is where we fly through and talk about some sports. What are the sports that you love the most uh, away from AFL or maybe include AFL in there, but what's your favorite and why? Uh, Yeah. NFL is definitely definitely number one for for many reasons. Um, yeah, I kind of I didn't really I didn't really know how I get into it. I think playing Madden was probably how I got into PlayStation. It. Yeah, PlayStation um, was probably how I got into it. I remember maybe like Madden two thousand and five or something like that. And, um, was probably how I kind of just started playing. I only played sports games on on the PlayStation when I was playing. So that's probably how I kind of got into the sport. And it was just like a totally different thing that I've ever ever seen before in Australia. So, um, yeah, I love, love NFL. Um, I don't really watch any other games, but I appreciate how, how well skilled they are. You know, like if you actually try to play another sport, like we try to play soccer at the club and I'm absolutely terrible. And yeah, oh. you see some of the goals that they kick from, from outside the box and you just think it's, yeah, it's crazy. So 
Um, that and, and NRL, love love me NRL. You know, um, it's good to meet a lot of the boys who are who are in the um, fantasy comp, and and you can kind of follow those boys. And um, we did a few things with the South Sydney Rabbitohs last year as well during the preseason. So um, yeah, it's all it's good to have an interest in the sport, and then actually to to have a bit of a common interest in. Um, yeah, be mates with guys in the NRL. It's pretty pretty cool to watch them. It is cool. The uh, we don't like the Storm boys anymore though. The Clubhouse boys. <laughs> I mean, we love them, but they knocked us off in fantasy and uh, ruined our season and, and and you know fractured our relationship as well. I was getting a couple messages from the meatball going, "What are you doing?" Um, nah, you're right. It's actually interesting when you know people when they're playing. You do zone in a little bit and watch them. I remember watching Pappy last year, just returning from injury, and you just kind of you're not even watching the game. You're just trying to watch the player and. Um, nah, you're right. It's uh, NRL's like they've really. I, I reckon they've changed a couple of rules now. It's, it's, it's exciting to watch, isn't it? Yeah, they got rid of the um the six again. They oh, sped it up a bit. Of, yeah, yeah, got to go a bit quicker. So, um, and in yeah, Vegas, there's... like the start of the season, like <laughs> it's pretty cool. Like hats off to NRL getting it done. Yeah, you know, like everyone obviously competes NRL AFL together. Um, yeah, you know, sorry, against each other, especially the diehard NRL and AFL fans. But we love them. We love it all, and. They've beaten us. Yeah. I've always said AFL should be played in the States. Mm. Um, in a Yeah, there is an AFL comp in the States. I try to get our camp there every single year, but they still refuse where it's too much money. But there is a, actually an AFL United States comp over, That's great. over there. So, um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how the Vegas NRL um, stuff goes. I so. saw Gronk was on the uh, hype reel the other day with the <laughs> Manly Seagulls. I, it's it's going to be awesome. I think it'll be great. Yeah. When we think about sport, what's the most memorable – sporting event you've been to live or watched maybe on TV if you can't remember live, but yeah, not been involved in, more watching. And, and what's the most memorable moment that stands out? Oh, that's pretty tough. Well, I know. We're, we are, uh, we're playing a bit of a disadvantage here because we got, we got to play during the season. Um, probably myself, maybe like the, the Anzac games. Yeah. I reckon they're probably some of the, memorable moments and feelings you get of like excitement and, and how cool the whole, like the whole MCG shuts down and there's candle lit and stuff like that. Um, I, I reckon that's one, probably one of the best things to be, to be a part of. Um, you know, when people are like, Oh, I'm coming down to Melbourne, what game should I go to? Anzac Eve is, is always one that, um, one that I, I love to be a part of, um, get to play me, me old mate, Stephen May too. So that's always, <laughs> always fun. But, in in terms of like the world, the world, the soccer world cup, I think is the number one world event. Um, I know when it was on a couple of years ago here, it was I was just like, oh, I'd be doing, I'd do anything to go over to the world cup. Um, right now, watch it. I just think it's just such a like such a unbelievable thing. It's a world game. Um, it's big. Yeah, the viewership, it it's, it's, yeah. yeah, it goes for so long. It just seems like it's just a big party every single day of the week. Like I think, yeah, like a soccer world cup or even a rugby. Rugby World Cup. Um, we were we were over in Europe while it was on this year, in twenty 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 three, and it was just amazing. You know, you go to just any pub and it was just packed with whatever team was playing that night. And um, there's always like cool stories that come out of it. Um, I think it was Fiji that beat beat Australia. It's like never happened in probably probably ever or for a very long time. And yeah, there's always these big upsets of these smaller countries beating these bigger countries and things. So. Um, yeah, that would definitely be one and one that I'm hoping to get to once. Oh, you got footy, plenty of time, brother. Done. You got plenty of time, <laughs> I tell you. Nah, that's good. Yeah, well said. What about the coolest athlete? You know, being at uh, some of the cool clubs, you know, being an athlete yourself, who's the coolest athlete that you've met in person? And do you remember, like, can you, any stories when you met them? Oh. I've got one to remind you. I've written it down in case, just because I found it interesting. That I've met. Cam Newton? No, I missed him. You missed him? Yeah, I oh, missed him. Oh, because I know so, he went to Richmond. Yeah, so Cam Newton came in 2016, so the year before I got there. Because he was full, they, like, I, I watch him and he's very laid back, yeah. but he kind of looked, I don't know, he was very, hey, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Like, he just looked like he really embraced that moment and got around a lot of the boys yeah. and looked real happy, you know? Yeah. Like, he just. I think he trained. I think he trained a little bit. From The story that I've been told is that he was at the club for a week and he just trained, sat in meetings, like did the lunches, did everything with him um, just to kind of get like a feel of a different club. And he, I think the biggest feedback was that he couldn't believe that the whole playing group all spoke to each other. 
He reckons that like they're a bit offense in your line. QB room, Spur- RB Spur- room, yeah. wide receiver room. Yeah. yeah. And he was just like, I can't believe how like everyone is just like mates and, and talks to each other and things like that. So there were some good stories of him bringing NFL ball and just like throwing it down the field and boys just running yeah. routes. They were like, oh, we know he's, they're like, we knew he was like a good throw, but when he was throwing him, it was just like unbelievably impressive. That's but um, yeah, maybe I went to Baltimore in 2018. So me and Sean Grigg um, were lucky enough to go into the Ravens facilities and watch them train before they versed um, Pittsburgh. Um, so that's mad. We were. I was kind of hoping to meet Lamar Jackson. That's who I wanted to meet because I loved him during his college career and um, just I know he just seems like he's real low key. Like he seems like a little he bit. Does. Of a kid. He does. He gets around everyone. Um, yeah. So he, I, that was one that I was hoping to meet, but we. Um, Unfortunately, didn't. Um, but we met Justin Tucker. We oh, had, really? We brought, a, we brought an AFL ball. Um, so he was kind of just like sussing it out and trying to work out what was what was going on and who we were and things like that. But uh, we had a bit of a bit of a talk to him and we're trying to get him to kick it with us, but he he wouldn't do it. <laughs> with his, I guess he's a kicker, not a punter, which is yeah a little bit different. But we we spoke to him for a, um, for a little bit and just kind of hung around their facilities during the during their main training leading into. Um, their game, so yeah, that was probably pr- probably the that's me. I guess I guess he's probably the biggest athlete that I've yeah met before. So well, he's the one, he's the best kicker ever as well. Yeah. So yeah. um, they, is that why you love the Baltimore Ravens? Yeah, I, I was liked I liked Lamar Jackson just because he wasn't at a big college um, when he was going through through the ranks. And he kind of stuck with Louisville and um, yeah, he won the Heisman before he got drafted and still had another year there. So I kind of followed him. Um. And then, yeah, I think it's a bit of like a cool working class city. So that's why I like the Ravens. And <laughs> Got a bit of fruit shop about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Up yeah, at 11. <laughs> that's great. If you could be anyone in the sporting world, let's say you could be one human in the world only for a week, who would it be and what are you doing in that week? <laughs> a sporting. So someone in sport. Yeah. Oh, it's a tough question because you always think of like a Ronaldo or a Messi, but like, what do they do during the day? That's wow. what I always think. I'm like, are they? I Probably. like, I like sitting at cafes and being around the people and things like that. But hey, you could do that as messy and just embrace it, man. You get <laughs> swamped. Yeah, you would. I feel like, oh, they're actually enjoying like going to do that. But um, I don't know. I think, well, kind of, kind of thinking about it in the hub when we were all together for like five months or whatever it was. It was probably one of the best years I think I'll have, even though it was such a Shocking year for the for the world and even in Australia. So, I would love to do like a a soccer World Cup. Like to be a part of a soccer World Cup for a big team, um, a big country would be, I think, would probably be like one of the best sporting things you can do. Or on a road trip with an NBA team. Like yeah. if you're a, if you're an East Coast team and you do a West Coast road trip for a week. Yeah. I think like that would be so be in the body of an NBA yeah. star. Maybe, maybe so not a star. Maybe like a I don't think you'd. I don't think I'd want to be a star. I you want to be? Oh, like a, I reckon you do. For the week, you only get, you only get a week, man. You're back in the, in the meatball yeah. a week later, which is still Cause, fine. Cause but I like, look at I look at their contracts in the NBA, and it's like they're still earning pretty good money. The ones who are like yeah, the fifth it, and sixth and seventh you players. You can do some damage in a week, man. If you're the big dog, <laughs> <laughs> you want to be the big dog for a week, don't you? Yeah. Oh, that's a great shout, though. Be someone throughout that journey. Yeah. So you're not just in limbo, you know, train and go on to cafes. You're generally like playing. You can go out for a drink or a, or yeah, a coffee you can in different – experience the city. Yeah, like, you know, and you're with the boys, private jets, yeah. go shopping, live the life. I look, at, I look at their contracts and it's like three years for $40 million. And I'm like, well, they're still living it up. Yeah. Even though they're not their superstar. They're still living it up, but everyone kind of knows who they are, but they don't really care. Yeah. I reckon that would be – you, you so, don't want to be the big dog. Okay. But you don't want to be the low dog. You want yeah, to be yeah, in yeah, between. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so who would that be? Uh, oh, I'm not, I'm not like like an Austin NBA. Reeves. Yeah, that's, hanging that's, out with LeBron, but yeah. not LeBron. Yeah, you got LeBron's number, and you could probably hang out with him. But you could you probably are, or he, yeah. So, yeah. so it's a Reeves job. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I think something like that. I know Although he's, I a, he's based in LA, so you probably want to go to. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> good. Pers- yeah, it's, I haven't thought about it like that. Yeah. A couple more questions. Who is the goat in the eyes of Dion Prestia? Who's the goat? The greatest of all time. It's a great debate. Griffin Logue yeah. said it was Bones Jones in the UFC. Bones Jones. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hate UFC. I can't stand <laughs> it. Um, bit of heat coming Griff's way as well. 
Oh, I think Novak Djokovic. Yeah, he gone tennis. Yeah. yeah. I just think, like, what he's been doing for so long. He kind of was in that era with Rafa and Federer being dominant and he was still coming through. And then as soon as he. You know what? I've never him. really heard him be put on the the debate. Yeah. I just think, like, he's always the favorite in every single competition he goes to. And always wins. He's not slowing down. Wins on every every court. I think he's passed the Grand Slam title for, for men's. Um, yeah, it's a I good don't know. shout he, um, Yeah. He, did, he was able to just, like, improve his game so much from being in that era. Like, and if Rafa and Federer weren't in it, how much better could he have could mm. he have been? He might have literally won everything. Yeah, you're right. Because he he's his, done it with some serious his, talent his around him. Mate, well said. So there I, you go. I know. It just, yeah. And it's, it's not a sport that anyone can just pick up. That's what I, that's what I feel like. If you haven't played tennis for a while, you're not playing professionally at all, nowhere near it. So to be so good for so long, I think, yeah, he would be up there. That's very good by you. I didn't even think about that. Um, all right. Well, let's go to lunch. You know, you come on the show, you get looked after uh, at Only Sport. We've got the Cherry Sohos here. They're a hot commodity, mate. I've only got a few left. I think I've got a few left. <laughs> <laughs> They're yours. Um, look at that. Anyone out there that wants to use our discount code for Rick's Eyewear, use ACES. Very simple. Um, at checkout at rickseyewear.com.au and, uh, yeah, just apply the discount code ACES. At the end there at checkout, you get 20% off free express shipping and you'll look like the meatball, uh, which is they they suit you well. I know the sunglasses have been, we've been, you know, hard with the shape of our heads, both got pin yeah. heads. You've normally been an orbit man, but... Yeah, yeah, I tried on a fair few pairs that over at yours when we raided your apartment, but <laughs> um, no, nah, these are these suit me, I think. Yeah, they look great. Maybe um, get some feedback from the um, Aces fans. See yeah, they... give us some feedback in the comments. We'd love that. <laughs> Mate, leave them on. This is lunch with three, but you got to cut one. And we want to get in depth about this because this is pretty, pretty much our last question before we wrap up. Um, this is who you're going to lunch with. And I'm going to mix it up here, but you got to cut one and you got to tell them face to face. So there's David Beckham. <laughs> Michael Jordan and Tom Brady. It's called the Rick's Lunch. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You go and you're rocking up and I go, Dion, this is your prize, but you got to tell one of these boys to go home. <laughs> 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 uh, Which one of the boys are you cutting? Now, considering you're on the piss, you're having a grass time, you've got the sunnies on and oh. you want good convo, you, you probably want a bit of um, chemistry within the table, but they're all from a different, you know, walk of life. They're all... I think, yeah, incredible uh, athletes, and uh, it'd be a very tough decision. Who are you cutting? Oh, th this is a tough question. <laughs> this is very tough. Um, I absolutely love NFL, so Tom Brady has to stay. Yep. Um, okay, we're down to two. So Michael Jordan or David Michael Beckham? Jordan, David Beckham. Well, I didn't know much about David Beckham until that doco came out, and I had no idea like where he grew up, where he come from, and everything like that. So if you asked me about three months ago, I probably would have said Jordan. But, you know, I'm probably going to go Beckham. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah, going to leave gonna MJ gets the <laughs> – so what are you going to say, MJ? Sorry, bro. Just, sorry, mate, but we already know too much about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, that's oh, great. It's pretty tough. It but how tough. can you say no to one of them? Wow, that's why I put them together. That's why it's a great question. I'll take, I'll take Beckham just because his story. I love his story, you know. Yeah. Um, how he grew up and, and everything like that. And Yeah. Even though Jordan obviously had a pretty cool, pretty cool story as all three of them do, but yeah, yeah, I, th I just love like the come from working class Beckham and yeah, it's cool. What question do you reckon you're at? Like, uh, I think before we wrap up here, but like you're at lunch, you know, you've had a couple, yeah, you've warmed up, you're probably a little bit shy, but then the boys start talking. What do you reckon? Some questions. I mean, because yeah. imagine you come home and I said, mate, did you ask him this? Did you ask him that? And you're like, oh, mate, I just, I didn't. I was too busy yeah. just enjoying I'm myself. like the day to day of like their careers. Like, what did you do during the day? But do you reckon like, they want to answer that shit? Or you reckon they have to, you just have to get, you know how you yeah, don't like talking footy, right? Yeah. But I'm like, what did you do on your day off? Okay. Or yeah. like, did you fly, like David Beckham, like, when you had a weekend off, did you fly to Barcelona when you were playing for? England or whatever, yeah. like when you're playing club footy. Yeah. So that's what I imagine like all the soccer players do. Do they, oh, we've got the weekend off. We play for a Premier League team. Let's go to Ibiza for the weekend. And it's like us going to Sydney. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> things like that. It's probably more things like, yeah, like their day-to-day -day kind of 
life. Not so much like football. Mate, he wouldn't be able to do anything. Yeah, I know. That's why you don't want to be a big dog. Yeah. You want to be the in-between. The Reeves. <laughs> it's the Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves or Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, again, rickseyewear.com.au. Use our discount code ACES if you want some Soho cherries like the meatball. Brother, that's all I've got for Only Sport. That is the script for everyone out there. Um, we appreciate your support. Only Sport, uh, we're, we're flying through them now. It's been great to uh, to get some people on that we've had on before and understand a little bit more about growing up and around sport outside of uh, obviously the sport that they're in, which is AFL right here, and, um, and talk about other sports that they love like NFL and a few other things like NRL. Mate, thank you so much for your time, Thanks, brother. Tommy. Appreciate it. And uh, all the best in 2024. Let's kick off 2024 with a bang. Um, to everyone out there, hope you've had a great start to the year and we'll see you on the next episode of Only Sport. One more time because I really mean it. I just want to say a massive thank you for all the support you continue to give us at the Oz American Aces. If you want to further support us, Make sure you like and subscribe, hit the follow button so you can keep up to date with all our exciting shows and announcements. Righto, now it's time to give our sponsors a massive plug. Struggling to make it to third base before striking out? Wood not driving like it used to? Let me guess, tackle's gone a little bit soft? No stress. If you're having issues in the bedroom, like erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation, Australia's favourite men's healthcare provider, Pilot, has all the clinical tools you need to get your game back on track. Thousands of Aussie men come to Pilot to get simple, discreet, and clinical treatments online. Pilot has free shipping, auto refills, and free follow-ups over text with practitioners. Get started today at pilot.com.au. And remember, play hard until the final whistle with Pilot. Aces, I know I always talk about the Rixies, but i got to offer you the discount again in case you've forgotten or in case you're sleeping under a rock. We have a special discount code for everyone that listens to this podcast or watch the podcast. It's ACES. Head online at rickseyewear.com.au and use the discount code ACES and you'll get 20% off. That's right, 20% off, one-fifth at checkout and free express shipping. So head online, rickseyewear.com.au and check it out.